Thank you. The law. Besides that, we all know how the cop framed you, and we want to tell you that we believe in you more than ever. Thanks, folks. To show you how I feel about it, I'm going to see that you get a good job. Check. Well, the lockstep didn't give you a sore feet, did it? Joan, you're wonderful. You're coming here with me. Your letters of encouragement. You don't know how much it helps me. to meet Billy Morgan, the boy broker. He disposes of bonds well. Did I something for you? Can you write down your address and I'll show you a swell trick. Let him go ahead. Maybe he'll lay a leg. He's all right. Houdini. Well, what's the trick? That was it. I wanted to find out where you reside. <laughs> oh, I want to live.
no giant right there. He's in there. Giving me another chance. Last year, Mary. Because why can't we be married, Mary? We have a little sat in the drop. Now we'll have to have a little Won't you? No. Well, tell me why. Well, I've had enough of being a policeman's daughter, and I don't want to be another policeman's wife. Well, now, what's the matter with policemen? They're manhunters. They're cruel and merciless. They're always hunting them for a devil and sending them to jail. And they think themselves great heroes. Well, we've got to uphold the law. Law? The third degree in bulldozing people into confession crimes they didn't commit? Is that law? No, but, oh, I don't understand. No. Of course you don't. You're a policeman, and you'll never understand. I understand what you do. Perhaps if you rent a policeman, Tom. Maybe, maybe I could resign. Please, Tom. I met Dick Williams today. Oh, that's why you turned down the best detective sergeant on the force. Is mm-hmm. he? I suppose if Tommy had a burglar's kit instead of a shield, he'd fall into his arms. And then if he croaked some guy and stick up a bank, he'd hang on his neck and kiss him to death. No, Father. But if I could help people when they get out of jail, it would sort of square them for not putting him in, wouldn't it? So you think you'll start in by helping that dirty crook Williams, eh? If I can help him, they good. Find a place for himself. I'm certainly going to do it. Now you listen to me. You keep away from that rat and hook up with Tommy or I'm through with you. Do you understand?
Get him up. Get him up. You go out of here. Get him up. Get him up. Now, come on. Get over there with him. Come now. Come right up. Come in, Danny. What's on your hat? You know Danny McGann, don't you, Pete? Sure, I do. How are you, Mr. Manny? Fine. They tell me you know more crooks than any detective on the force. <laughs> Maybe I missed my vocation. Don't you believe it, boy? There's nothing better than being a good detective. Gee, that's what I want to be, Mr. Manning. He has a line on the outfit that robbed the warehouse. Shot O'Brien. You have? Yes, sir. Good. Let's go into my room. You coming, Tommy? Oh, I'll be with you in a minute. I guess it. I'll pack my bag and be right down. You know, I think Backman and his gang are mixed up in this. Yeah? Say, Chick Williams is one of that gang, ain't he? Yeah, I think he is. I know he is. Listen, Backman is just a fence. I'll show you. He wouldn't kill anybody. He's handled more stolen goods. Oh, hello, John. Who's in there? A pal of mine from the homicide squad. They want you in the brain. John. I've been thinking over what you said just to me. And right or wrong, you're more to me than anything else in the world. And always have been, ever since we were kids together. And if you're against my being on the police force, well, as soon as I get the rap that Scott O'Brien, I'll quit. I'm afraid it's too late, Tommy. Are you in love with Dick Williams, Joe? Yes. And I'm going to say. Well, it looks like we'd hook up Williams with the O'Brien killing. 
Yes, sir. I heard what you said, Dad, and I can prove that you can't stand the for that. Now, you keep out of this. This is a police affair. I'm going to make it my affair. Well, everything's set, Tommy. I'll pull you through our plan of the Vincent Hotel. Why, how do you do? Well, I didn't know you knew Danny again, Joan. Yes, I know him. But it's Billy Morgan, the boy Joker. And I'm sure my friends will be glad to know that he's a papa. Ask the lady in the comment to come up, please. Right. Come in, Daisy. Don't get sore. Because I very seldom take a drink. I hope you'll let me call and see Miss Joan again. Well, if it isn't your old Diamond Daisy. Again? I want to meet Miss Thomas. How do you do? Ah, oh, hello. Thomas. Well, are you ready, dear? Where are you going with her? Miss Thomas has invited me to spend a weekend at a roof bungalow on the Central. You're not going with this woman or her kind anywhere, understand? You and Backman keep away from my daughter. Father, oh, please don't insult my friend. No. Oh, that's all right. I've been insulted by experts before I met the police department. Now you get out of here and tell Backman what I said. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I resent the way you talk to a lady. Especially when a lady's a friend of mine. Now listen here. This is a private affair and you keep out of it. Well, no copper's gonna bulldoze me and insult my friend. You get out of here while the going is good. Oh, is that so? Yes, uh, that uh, man. I'm sorry. I get the kid. See you, none. Come on, get me. I'm glad you didn't get off yet. That kid means a lot. Your daddy doesn't have a cross chip. He needn't worry about me. Why, Jimmy almost had a fight. So you leave it to me. I'll get her. Come on, Don Duane. Oh, no, let me get her. If your friends are on the left, as you say they are, I'll guarantee they'll have nothing to fear from Danny McGann on me. Hello, Tommy. Hello, Dick. I'm so glad you came up here. Father has a little matter that I want settled right away. Why, what's on your mind, Mr. Manning? Hmm? You've got a hell of a nerve coming in here. They think you're mixed up in the O'Brien case. <laughs> oh, I'm afraid you're on the wrong lead, Mr. Manning. Yeah? Yeah. I never carry a gun. Unless the police plant one on me as they did the last time. Where were you last Friday night, Williams? Friday night? Now, let me see. Where was I last Friday night? I was at the National Theater. Yeah? Well, you'll have to prove that to me. I think I can. What?
What are these guys doing? The warehouse robber was at 10 o'clock Friday evening. And at that time, Daisy, Mr. Bachman, Chick, and I were at the National Theater together. What are you doing out in public with this jailbird? Answer me. He's my husband. We were married this morning. You let her marry you? Why, yes, sir. Oh, that's all right, Joe. That's the only kind of stuff they know. Get your thing. She's not going with you, understand? She's my wife. She's my daughter. That was kind of rotten of you, Tick. Marrying her like you did. Yeah? Well, you would think so, Tommy. You see, I beat you to it. Now, you get out of here. All right, Governor. I want to tell you something, Mr. Manning. Joan's my wife. And you can't take her away from me. Even if you are a cop. Get out! Well, what are you going to do? Well, she married you, Lacey. You ain't going to let them get away with it, are you? They've got a perfect alibi. Then I'll make her break it down. Go. Go. She's gone. Where are you going? I'm going to kill that girl. Oh, pop. wait a minute. Wait a minute, Pete. Let me handle this, won't you? Well, how are you going to do it? Oh, I don't know, but... Let's see it. Come on. Thank you.
Number nine, Mr. David. Hello. This is George Stanwell David. Lyndon speaking, Detective Bureau. One of my men will use the name of Morgan. He may have called here. Okay, Tommy. Get in there. What is this, Tommy? I'm asleep over in Georgia City. They bust into my room and bump me on the beach. And I'm here. Say, I didn't wave extradition. It's unconstitutional. And I want a bust me. Oh. A lawyer. A lawyer. Your gun talk? No. They put it in their pocket. Sit down, Tom. Me? Sure. So you're driving away from the warehouse Friday night. Just that no blind was shot. Oh, no, tell me. No, no. I was in a national theater Friday night. Yes? Yes. You ever know what happened to Gimpy Jackson after he killed a cop? He just disappeared. Oh, say, listen, Tommy. Listen, I, I wouldn't croak nobody. Honest, I wouldn't. Not even a cop. That's tough. Seeing that you've been elected to take the rap for murder. <laughs> <laughs> ah, don't make me laugh.
up that gun. Take it. Now put it on the desk. How'd you like to be buried next to Kenzie Jackson's stop? You can't pull that stuff on me. I got an alibi. You have to believe it. You're going to escape through that window. When you escape, you grab this gun. Your fingerprints are on it. You take a shot at Pete. But you miss. Pete shoots back and stuff the pin, but Pete don't miss. Get me? No, 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 no. Oh, no, it's not it. It's murder. It's murder. Why did you kill O'Brien? I didn't. Put it. I don't know. Who killed O'Brien? 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 Who killed O'Brien? Who killed O'Brien? Get me to squeal him. And we'll get you out there now. I'm afraid. I guess. That's your shot at me. Now let him have it. No, no. No, no, no. Tell me, please. Please tell me I'll tell. I'll tell. I'll tell. I'll tell. I'll tell. Come on, it was. 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 Come on, 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 come
I've got to have an alibi for Friday night. What's wrong? Why? What's the matter? Boss Malone's been pinched. Wait a minute. You leave this room when I tell you to. Now, I've got to find someone respectable who'll swear I spoke to him on the phone for about five minutes. Come on, Buck, think. The deacon. He's always a grand. Oh, I said respectable. Take off your hat. How's Billy Morgan, the boy broker, tonight? Huh? Really? Billy? Come here. Who, me? Sure. Sit down. I wonder if you do Chick and me a little favor. What is it? You see, the cops are working a frame up on Chick. Now he's got to find someone whose word the police will take. Someone we can depend upon. See, I've got a perfect alibi except for about five minutes. And we want you to swear that Chick Williams telephoned you last Friday night about ten and talked to you for five minutes. Well, what do we talk about? <laughs> Why, we talked about me getting married. Yeah, sure. And he wanted you for his best man. <laughs> Wish I his best man? Sure. Will you do it? He'll do it. Certainly hmm. I'll do it. I'm always glad to do a favor for my friends. Excuse me. I didn't see you. Are you going? Well, 
Well, I, I got a, I got a date with a couple of Wall Street guys. We're gonna plaster the town plenty. Yeah? But I wouldn't go if I were you. You see, well, we might need you any minute. Why not ask your friends to come over here? Why, sure. This place needs a little plastering. That's a great idea. I'll get him. Wait a minute. I'll do that for you. What's the number? Uh, it's, um, uh, Melrose. Two, one, hundred. Jimmy Melrose, 2100. Yeah. Uh, my, my friends are stopping at the Vincent Hotel. <clears throat> Who do I ask for? George Sauer Raven. <clears throat> Who? George Stanislaus. David. Hello. Give me Mr. George Stanislaus David. Yeah. I don't like his middle name. Neither do I. <laughs> Hello, Mr. David? Yeah. Well, I'm speaking for a friend of yours, Billy Morgan. Yes. He wants you to come over to Buck Backman's place at... Oh, you know where it is, huh? Tell him, tell him to bring all the boys. <laughs> he says to come over right away and bring all the boys with you. Tell him the boys will be right over. He's going to stall because there's going to be plenty doing. He says there's going to be plenty doing. <laughs> all right. They'll be over in about 12 minutes. Smart fella. Get me Glennon, the detective bureau. I can fix her. Winter, 4100. Say, Lammy Chop, do we dance or don't we? Sure, go ahead and dance. <laughs> All right, Cookie. Jones outside. What did you bring her here for? Oh, I, I tried to call her, but she would come. You're getting dumber all the time. Don't you call me dumb, you big bum. I wouldn't if I could think of anything worse. Why, you were... <laughs> um, um, well, what were you saying, sweetheart? No, well, I'll tell you later, darling. I couldn't stand it any longer, sis. Why didn't you call me? Oh, I'm sorry to worry you, darling, but this is evil. Well... The police are trying to get me for the warehouse killing. Well, they can't do that. You were with us Friday night. Sure he was. Yes, but... Oh, well, leave it to the cops. they got to pay someone. <laughs> now, there's not a thing to worry about, dear, really. You see, I've just located the chap I spoke to on the phone Friday night. And the thing, we were looking everywhere for Billy Morgan. And all the time, he was right. Billy Morgan? Yes. Yes, the boy that was at the house today. You mean it was Billy Morgan who phoned you Friday night? 
Why, certainly, dear. Why? <laughs> See if everything's all right. I'll write out it now. Mr. Morgan. Dick tells me that he phoned you Friday night at 10 o'clock. Is that right? Certainly. That's right. You swear to that? <laughs> Why are you acting so funny, dear? Why, you don't think he'd lie for me, do you? No. I don't think he'd lie for you. If I bring Tommy Drennan over here, will you swear the kick phone you Friday night? You just bring him over and see. All right. I'll get him right away. Oh, wait a minute, Joan. I wouldn't call Tommy, really. I... I... Winter, 4100. Hello. Did you say, Tommy? Detective Sergeant Glennon, please. Oh. Tommy left a few minutes ago. That's too bad. Well, did you should get Mr. Glennon late. I'll be right here. I think I know where I can reach Tommy. Melrose, two one hundred. Who? This is George Stanley Davis, please. This is a fact that we have to get in touch with each other in order to avoid the shipping. Hello, Mr. Davis. This is Joe Mormon. It's very important that I get a hold of Thomas Lemon. All right, thank you. He received a direct call from one of his men, and I won't be able to get in touch with him until he calls in again. I think I know how to get hold of the men. If you only could. Take Daisy and Joan over to your roof bungalow. Wait there for me. You know how coppers feel about coming around this joint. Joan. Ain't it the truth? Now, darling, I'll keep Morgan with me until I locate Glennon. Are you sure you can get Tommy? You leave it to me. I'll get a taxi at the corner. We'll be over in about half an hour. Come on, dearie. It means so much to me to have you bring Tommy and Morgan together. Don't I know it? Well, come on, Joan. You know, I know it's very clear. What are you going to do? Don't you let her out of your sight until I get there. Well, you've got to make Montreal tonight. <laughs> Tell Mr. Morgan that a lady wants to see him in here. Alone. (laughs) 
Morgan Supply Cup. What? What? What are you going to do? What do you think we're going to do? I'll be back in two minutes. If I'm not, you come and get me. Get away from me. Now then, you two-fisted, double-barreled he-man, give me your gun. Don't kid. You're a great little guy, ain't you? When it comes to shooting in the back, I never give a copper an even break. Leave me alone, you dirty stiff girl. The cop. Open that door. Murdering for him. Grab him. Grab him. Lay him down. Get an ambulance. Winter, 4100. Yes, and make it PDQ, sister. Here's the room. Can you imagine, Tommy? Say it on to me. I ought to be counting you see. I'm a bum detector. No, you're not, Dan. I'll get him. I swear I will. 
It's getting hard to see anything in here. I know I do it. Cup. And just belong to the blue club. Goodbye. Goodbye, Tommy. Tell mother and all the boys goodbye. Ready. I'll get William. I'll get the dirty yellow rat. Your step, Tommy. Watch it. Sure you'll get it. I'll get it, Harry boy. So help me. Take it easy. It's all part of the job, the boy.
I told you to keep away from that window. Say, outside of love, what else did anyone ever call you? Pack those bags. I'll tell you again. Pack those bags. Pack them. I gave up a good person to find a home <laughs> and, and a spring of phone. Don't kid yourself. You gave up nothing for me. You gave them up because you're just a natural born bum. Again, talk to me that way. After all I've done to you. Shut up, or I'll give you a suck in the nose. Oh, you will, will you? All right. Go on. Hit me. Hit me. I tell you. Go on. Uh, no. I'll fix them, Jerry. Don't you think it would be all right if I telephoned Chick to find out if he got a hold of Tommy? Oh, no, no, no. I wouldn't do that. She, he may have had more trouble locating Tommy than he thought he would. Everything's going to be all right. When I tell you to do something, I want to stop. Hello? Give me mail you. Four, four, one, two, three. Hello? Hello? Batman? Is Mr. Williams there? Who wants to speak to him? This is Mrs. Williams. Find out where she is. Where are you now? I'm Mr. Batman. Some girl I'm having a tank building. Hello? 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 Get away from that phone. I'm just trying to get his back. What do you mean, letting her use that phone? I ought to break your neck. Oh, please. Don't talk about it. Do it. You're a fine pair to be mixed up with. A bum fence and a dizzy day. Are you going to stand there and let him call me dizzy? Go on, do something. Ah, uh, get away! <laughs> Now, you pack your things and we'll get out of here. Oh, darling. Did he hurt you? Oh, oh you big brute. Oh, baby. Can I do something for you? Yes. Keep away from me. I hope he kills you. Well, why don't you do what I say? What are you standing there for? I'm not going to leave here until you tell me why you didn't bring Tommy and Walden as you promised. I'll tell you nothing. Now, you're my wife and you'll do as I say. I'll never be your wife until you prove to the police that you're on the level. The police, eh? What do I care about them? I hate their guts. Now, you get this. I killed O'Brien.
And you're going through for me. I'm a crook and you're a crook's wife. Maybe it's the police. You keep your mouth shut. That's Glennon. I'll get him first. It's a holdup. Take that off, Pete. Look in there, Clash. Right behind those curtains. Come here. Turn around. Sure. Get over there. Sure. Sit down. Sure. So he's in there. No. You're making it tough for me. Loving that rat. It isn't that funny. Honestly, it isn't. Oh, you needn't be afraid of shooting. Right back to me, Kurt. He will. I know he will. He said it. He did, eh? Take a seat. Come out, William. Take them all out. Come on. Sure. See, you don't try anything funny. Oh, he won't. Get that chair and smoke him out. All right, let him have it. Stop, I've had enough. Come out. Put your hands up and bring them out first. Never mind them, Ed. But if I'm taking any chances, leave them to me. Wait out there. Now sit down. Sullivan. What are you going to do about it? That's my affair. I'm in a lousy coffin. Lousy coffin. That's it. And you're the hero. You're a fight. Well, that's Danny's son. He was a funny sort of a kid. He never kept his nose for fear he might kill somebody. Well, what's that got to do with me? Nothing. Only I noted it, and now take a good look at it. 
Ah, how did I know he was a cop? He pulled a gap, and I thought he was trying to hold up Backman's place. Well, that's your defense, is it? Yes, and I can prove it. <laughs> Come on, take me down. I'm not going to take you anywhere. What do you mean? When Danny McGann died in my arms, I promised him I'd get you. Why, what are you driving at? You mean you're going to croak me? You're not going to give me a chance? Sure. Same chance that you gave Dan. I'm going to shoot you right in the back. Oh, now, now listen, Tommy, that's murder, don't you see? Why, so you couldn't get away with that. Even if you are a cop. And I, I'll show you whether I can or not. Now take a look at the barrel of this gun if you can without popping a tonsil. Don't, Tommy, please. Listen. Lock me up. Lock me up, Tommy. Send me to the chair. Do anything you want, only don't shoot me. That's the only way I'm going to do for him. Oh. Open the door. Open the door. Is he going to kill me? Open the door. Don't stop me. No, you don't. There's only one way out. Oh, please pity me, Tommy. I can't die. I'm not ready to die. And they call you that gun. No, I'm not, Tommy. Come I'm on. not. Turn around. No. No. Take it like you've given it. I'll do anything you say. I'll give up, Joe. Honest, I will. Anything you say. Oh, no, Tommy. No, no, please. Run, sir. It'll be all over in a minute. Oh, no, no, no. No, no. no. <laughs> You shot him? I knew the rat that shot O'Brien and Danny was yellow. What did he do? Try to get away? Throw some water on him. Water? He's not dead. Just fainted. I shot him with a couple of blanks. Blanks? So you're fainted. Ain't that... Oh, what the matter? Did big bad policemen frighten Mama's little killer to death? Come on. Get up here. Sit down. <laughs> Tommy, can you imagine the headlines? <laughs> Cheap bandit shy to death. <laughs> All the way. Say, sister, get me winter for one hundred. Why did you come in? Look out! Well, I got the 
Hello. Hello. We'll be going. 